microbiome is a newly discovered organ in the body. And it's also the name given to the community of all the microbes that live in our body. It's a collective word, and these microbes are bacteria, archaea, they're viruses, they're fungi, they're protists. And together they actually uh, weigh about two kilos. So this organ, this virtual organ, most of them live in the lower part of the intestines called the colon. And they're the same size and weight as the liver. So a really important part of our body, which we thought was rather boring until very recently. It turns out there are a hundred trillion microbes inside us, which is roughly 10 times the number of cells in our body. So you could say that we are 90% uh, alien and only 10% human. And rather than just being boring creatures that live in the dark, um, waiting for food, they're actually really crucial to how we digest our, our food. They have hundreds of times of enzymes and chemicals that break down our fiber, much more than we do as in our human cells, and we've evolved with them over millions of years. So we actually share about 40% of our genes with them, but they have 200 times more genes than we do. All of them like little factories producing proteins, chemicals, enzymes, many of which we still don't know what they do. But we do know that they also have a key role in maintaining our immune system, because when these microbes feed off fiber that gets down into our guts, they will produce uh, short-chain fatty acids, little chemical signals, very small, that actually will influence our immune cells and suppress the immune system. So stop it overreacting, stop us getting allergies, stop us getting autoimmune disease. And at the same time, they also produce about a quarter of our hormones and our vitamins. And these important B vitamins uh, and even brain chemicals like serotonin that you may have heard of that is really important for our for the uh, chemical signaling in the brain and can make the difference between us being happy and being sad. So it's, it's these microbes that are doing this all the time, these little chemical factories that are absolutely crucial. And that's why this, this new study of the microbiome is, is so exciting because we're realizing that uh, not only they're doing this, but also we're all very unique. We all have a unique set of microbes. Uh, you will have just one set of microbes that only one in 20,000 people will have. And we only share about 20% of our microbes with each other on average. So understanding these individual differences in our microbes explains why we react differently to foods. Why one person can eat a potato and gain weight, another person might lose weight, why someone might get a food reaction to something. These are all really important and may explain also why we react to drugs and medications differently, why some people get hangovers and others don't, um, why some people get vitamin deficiencies more quickly than others. So this really the microbiome is explaining much of the things that uh, we've been puzzled by particularly uh, in nutrition as well. And so by understanding the microbiome, uh, we can learn a lot about science and a lot about our, our individuality. Now, the whole field has been advanced because we've used genetic methods, which we've developed from the Human Genome Project, into studying microbes. Before that, we would just take samples of a stool sample and culture it on plates grown for weeks to see which microbes you can grow up and then you photograph them and classify them. That was a very slow, inefficient pro process that only looked at 1% of the microbes. Now with genetic methods we can look at a particular gene and either look at one gene in every microbe or we can look at all the genes, so-called shotgun sequencing. And then you pick up the fungi, the viruses, and every single microbe, and there are thousands of them, different ones. And this is giving us a unique snapshot of what's going on inside all our guts. And the range is amazing. And what we're realizing is that 
if you separate sick people and healthy people, you always see uh, some consistent signs of healthiness, which is a diverse microbiome. And if you look at sick people, where they have, they're overweight, they have diabetes or some common disease, they have much less diversity. And it appears that this is really crucial for us, is having enough of these beneficial microbes to um, keep our bodies healthy. And we're just beginning to understand the links about this and how it interacts with most of the diseases we find. And we've been able to actually, through animal experiments using sterile mice, work out that you can actually transmit some of these traits um, from humans to mice and from mice to mice. So potentially many of these uh, disease and conditions like obesity uh, can actually be infectious. Uh, by changing our microbes. So the microbiome is now being used in a wide variety of areas. It's being used in cancer uh, to uh, help people re respond to chemotherapy um, by either using probiotics to improve the, um, the community or actually by uh, giving people back auto-transplanting their microbes before the chemotherapy so that they don't get sick when they've had antibiotics. It's also being used in autoimmune diseases to help people respond to immune therapies. And we're understanding that it's also important in the skin, uh, can help people with psoriasis. Um, and there are even lots of non-medical uses of the microbiome as well. Uh, people are mining these genes in the microbes that might be useful as uh, ways of creating new fuels or new biological drugs. So in a way there's a, an infinite number of possibilities that were suddenly uh, available to us from this new world that's opened up inside us. In terms of the microbiome now, we, we're just really looking at the tip of the iceberg. We, we know the detailed functions of only a very small percentage of all the microbes out there, but we are seeing consistent ones that are related to, to human um, conditions. And these, these same microbes do keep recurring. And when we looked in our twin studies here in the department at King's College, we were testing the microbes of all the twins that came through. So we looked at about 4,000 stool samples from the twins. We extracted the DNA. We uh, worked with colleagues um, at Cornell University, we analyzed the results and we compared the identical and the non-identical twins for their microbes. And it turned out there were some greater similarities in the identical twins compared to the non-identical twins. So it seems that some of the microbes that live inside us are there because, uh, for genetic reasons, they like us more than other people. We don't know why, uh, and it could be a two-way reaction. that. Um, we like them and they like us, and so uh, that's why um, we coexist. And it turns out that in human, the human disease we've looked at, the microbes that tend to be uh, more genetically influenced rather than influenced by diet uh, are the ones that are important for human health. So it's, it could be explaining why some people are genetically predisposed to some conditions. Could be that they have more or less of these these microbes, but. I think the big change we've seen in the last few years is we used to think that microbes were bad for you, that we would concentrate on the pathogens. It turns out that 99% are actually either neutral or beneficial for us. And the more beneficial ones you have, the less likely you are to get diseases. So uh, I think we're changing our perspective about trying to kill off the pathogens, and now we need to change our, our bigger view to say how can we keep our community of microbes, the microbiome healthy, so we have maximized the number of beneficial microbes and that will help our immune systems, help us to produce more vitamins, help our defenses naturally. And this is where we need to, to start re-looking really at our lifestyles and particularly trying to change our views on antibiotics and pesticides and reverse some of the mistakes we've made in the past because generally 
our diversity of microbes in every country tested has gone down in the last 40 years. So in the era before we had processed foods, before we had antibiotics, before we um, had these sterile cesarean section births, we were much better off. And studies in Africa of, from tribes that still live like we, we used to appear to have much healthier microbes. So we've got a long way to go to get back to our healthy roots. The big question is how do we get back some of the microbes we've lost? When we compare ourselves to the hunter-gatherers in, say, Tanzania, we've lost about 40% of our microbes. And they have many species that we no longer have in the West. So one way is to start reintroducing them. Like It's a bit like early farming. We could start farming them up and see if we can introduce them back into humans, get them back as, as part of our, our chain. Um, we don't know if that's going to be successful or not. Um, but we know that very often, rather than having zero amounts of this, we may have very small amounts inside us of some beneficial ones that we can grow up. And we use prebiotics uh, to, for that. Prebiotic is a term like a fertilizer for your microbes. So by giving them more to eat and, and working out which microbes like to eat which food, we can start to stimulate them and get them to grow. So it could be a combination of giving some of these seeds from these beneficial microbes that are no longer with us, which we'd call probiotics, because probiotic is a live microbe that you might think of normally in yogurt or kefir or, some, or sauerkraut, uh, fermented foods, adding those plus with a, a high fiber diet that's, that's created to try and boost these numbers of these rare microbes. So I think we're the very early stages of understanding this, but we do know that with some foods, uh, you can improve microbes quite a lot. So I think it's a mixture, but also it's changing our lifestyles. It's, it's saying, you know, we have to stop using antibiotics indiscriminately. We have to stop unnecessary cesarean sections. We have to stop uh, our indoor living. We have to reconnect with nature in order to get full benefit of microbes. We know that having a dog, for example, is healthy for your microbes. You, you know, so we should all be stroking dogs and um, going to farms and things much more. Interesting, not cats, just dogs. But that seems to be... So, you know, a lifestyle for our kids that's perhaps more different to the ones we've been brought up. Get them dirty, get them playing outdoors, get them eating more vegetables, less processed foods, and uh, get back to nature.